Hi everyone, this is Karen Miner, St. Mary's University, Managing Director of Cooperative Management Education. Thanks for joining today for our webinar on ethical finance and ethical banking. Just so you know, during this webinar, you're all muted. And if you have questions or comments, please do use the chat and question feature. I will be monitoring that throughout. And therefore, I can flag to stop to have Goran go into something in more detail or to answer any questions. We'll have lots of time for questions and discussions. And I can later on unmute people so they can speak up. But it's helpful if you flag that for me in the chat or questions as we go. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Sonia Novkovic, the Academic Director for Cooperative Management Education, to introduce Goran. Thank you, Karen. And hello, everybody. Uh, it is really exciting uh, for us to host uh, Goran Yeras uh, from Croatia, um, the manager of uh, the uh, Cooperative for Ethical Finance. And uh, he will uh, obviously tell you more about it, but also we're looking forward to your questions uh, after, his, uh, after his talk. Uh, Goran is um, uh, a physicist by training, uh, but has uh, a, a lot of experience uh, with software development for um, the financial sector as well as other types of enterprises, and then moved into um, uh, from the financial sector in Holland, moved uh, to Croatia to actually start this uh, uh, cooperative for ethical finance. Uh, it is a fascinating project, and we're lucky to have him. Uh, Goran is also a new member of the CME family, uh, the Co-op Management Education here at St. Mary's, because we've employed him as a, <laughs> as a, a supervisor uh, to one of our students uh, in the program. So I'm not going to dwell on it further. We'll leave it to Goran and your questions, if you have any uh, for him and for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, to Karen and to Sonia for the introduction. Uh, thank you all you for uh, coming uh, and uh, yeah, hearing uh, something more about uh, our cooperative and our uh, banking project in Croatia, for which we hope that uh, uh, could inspire uh, some of you professionally or academically, of course, or privately. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that it's something that we would like to share as much as possible and uh, find uh, partners uh, uh, in it of uh, any kind uh, uh, internationally, worldwide. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, maybe to start a little bit about uh, with the motive uh, why we are doing, uh, uh, me personally and also we as a cooperative, what we are doing. Uh, that's because uh, uh, through the experience uh, of working in classical uh, financial sector, uh, being a consultant for many years for uh, banks and uh, insurance uh, companies, uh, and especially during the time of crisis uh, that started in uh, uh, 2008, uh, I, I was personally also witnessing something which uh, to me was completely crazy and that's uh, uh, the approach that all those institutions are taking uh, and their impact uh, to the community, which was much, much different uh, uh, than uh, I was expected as somebody who was not uh, uh, by education not so much tied to, uh, to, to economy and finance. Uh, so uh, uh, logically, people usually think that banks are institutions that are just uh, safeguarding, keeping their money, uh, uh, even in Croatia, where uh, uh, financial education is very low, many people think of that money that it is some money which is uh, uh, bank, which banks are he keeping somewhere in some drawers uh, with uh, their name on it uh, and uh, lending to uh, some other uh, people and then returning back, back to drawers uh, and uh, uh, the DTT functions that way. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, when we look at what the banking today really is, it has very much forgot uh, its uh, today's purpose. So, so basically, uh, what we wanted to do, we uh, tried to uh, reinvent from some fresh perspective uh, what is the role of the bank uh, into the society to actually look back to the basis uh, and think uh, how that the role of the banks uh, with what kind of policies and what kind of institutions uh, could be fulfilled to its full extent. Uh, so, uh, uh, banks, uh, which we usually as uh, users take as granted, are institutions that have uh, a crucial uh, power of directing uh, uh, all our economic activities in the society. Uh, why? Because those are institutions that have monopoly on uh, concentrating uh, people's savings, people's money in the banks. 
uh, today it's uh, almost impossible to uh, function in a normal life without being a customer of a bank, uh, having the money and deposits there. And all this money that is aggregated in banks, a bank uh, uh, put back to the economy uh, through their uh, financing and credit policies. So, so basically, those are uh, uh, that, that is the major uh, major function of the banks. Uh, and uh, they, uh, with that power, uh, in, especially in our monetary system, when uh, banks only need to keep fraction of its uh, uh, reserve, uh, uh, fraction of its uh, money as a reserve in the bank, and can. Uh, create electronic money in form of loans. Uh, they, they basically control vast majority of uh, money supply uh, of uh, any uh, any modern country to, in, in the world. Uh, if you look what they are doing with this uh, uh, with this money supply, all this money that is put back to the economy, uh, it has uh, very much changed in uh, in the last uh, uh, 20, 30, 50 uh, years. Uh, originally, uh, the banks were putting a uh, uh, vast majority of that money back into uh, projects of real economy, uh, to projects that are creating uh, new added value, uh, and that were then able to uh, uh, put back that uh, added value uh, also to the development of, of, uh, of, the, of the economy. Uh, but today, uh, large banks uh, are uh, 70 to 80 percent of their assets keeping in different uh, financial uh, uh, derivatives, financial products on the financial markets, and actually very small minority, uh, uh, sm small portion of the funds is going uh, back to the real economy, which is creating a new added value. Uh, and this uh, is something which uh, uh, we as, uh, as depositors, as people who have put and entrusted their money to banks, uh, we don't know that. And uh, we are very usually not aware of that because we have no uh, control whatsoever over the credit policy of a bank. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, we wouldn't want uh, uh, to allow our money to go to uh, money markets and to consumer loans. Uh, because uh, uh, we will see that it is not creating something which is of higher value to us and that is a new added value in the real economy process or building of some infrastructure or, for crea or creation of something else. So, so that's a crucial role of the bank. Uh, so, so basically what banks do, banks determine where our money that we have put into them is going. Is it going to uh, 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 reducing of uh, uh, carbon emissions by supporting the renewable energy? Is it going to uh, uh, present, uh, preserving environment? Is it going to agriculture? Is it going to uh, innovations and something that we uh, consider as the positive things, or is it going to uh, weapons, financing of wars, uh, uh, dirty energy exploitation practices in different countries, uh, in, uh, with, with different companies, uh, consumer uh, 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 consumer economy that we have today? So, so basically, that's what banks decide to do with our money. And that's something which uh, we uh, uh, actually have no control over whatsoever. And if we would like to have control, it would mean that we would need to take control over the uh, credit policy. And the credit policy is something which is exclusive, exclusively uh, reserved for uh, owners of a bank. So that would mean that the only way how to, uh, uh, how to take control over what is happening with our own money is uh, to, through uh, taking up the ownership uh, of the of the bank and this, this institution which is entrusted to manage it. And that's all what uh, ethical uh, banking is about. It is uh, uh, basically the major uh, goal of it and the major uh, thing that we want to Croatia to achieve is to empower people to enable them to understand that uh, uh, they cannot expect uh, uh, governments or other institutions to uh, uh, do uh, uh, for them what they uh, what they want but they actually need to take control over it first by taking over control over its own resources uh, Croatia is here, here quite a specific example uh, because 92% uh, uh, of the banking sector in Croatia is uh, foreign owned so it is owned by big uh, international foreign banks uh, and uh, uh, almost two thirds uh, of all funding that those banks are uh, doing is going to consumer loans. So uh, if you look to the uh, structural uh, economic problems in Croatia of uh, lack of funding for uh, uh, for real economy, for SMEs, uh, for any kind of infrastructure, uh, it is even more uh, highlighted there than in many other countries because of this uh, uh, very problematic uh, uh, structure of the ownership of uh, Croatian institutions.
uh, the other thing is uh, what is then the consequence of taking over the ownership of a bank. So if uh, uh, the bank would be 100% owned by its customers, then it automatically uh, turns the normal business model of a bank upside down because uh, uh, the profit maximization, which is usually the goal and target of uh, 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 mainstream banks, uh, is no uh, anymore uh, a goal for that kind of bank. Uh, because the debt profit that we uh, achieve would come on the expense of more expensive services to ourselves because now we are at the same time owners and the users and of course that doesn't make any sense so why would we charge ourselves more to get a profit and then pay taxes on that profit while maybe we uh, would have better benefits of that kind of institution uh, if we just ensure that uh, uh, the financing that we get out of the bank is uh, uh, more uh, tailor-made and more suitable to our needs uh, that it is uh, cheaper with the lower interest rates so that our uh, primary activity, primary business is uh, more competitive, more profitable and is enabling to uh, uh, get extra uh, money in, in, into the whole system. Uh, so, so basically the direct conclusion of, uh, uh, of ownership of the bank is that ethical bank then need to function as a, a not-for-profit organization which is basically reinvesting, uh, reinvesting uh, all of its profit uh, to to, uh, the uh, further growth and improvement uh, of the uh, of, of the system, and that's something which is uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, uh, unusual uh, to uh, to hear. But if you look back to uh, um, if you look back to the uh, origins of banking, where banks were formed by uh, people, by uh, farmers, uh, uh, citizens, uh, craftsmen, uh, uh, craftsmen people. Uh, in order to support their uh, their original common goals uh, with uh, joining their funding together, it's uh, much more basic to the roots. Even if you look uh, a step further on the uh, on, on the major uh, profit uh, generation uh, element of the bank, which is uh, which are of course uh, interest rates, that's something which also uh, we need to. I will not spend much time on it, but it is also something which is uh, questionable from from the ethical point of view, because none of the major uh, uh, major religions uh, in, in 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 the world. Uh, considers uh, uh, charging interest rates, uh, so earning money just on uh, the fact that you have money, uh, something that doesn't see this as a moral thing to do. So, so that's something that I will uh, put aside later, but maybe just to put as a uh, as interest uh, interesting thought uh, uh, to you. Uh, so, uh, what are the characteristics of ethical banks? Uh, ethical banks, uh, as we see it, uh, that is a term that was not coined by ourselves. Uh, that is a term that was coined by existing uh, association of 30 banks in Europe, uh, which is called Federation of uh, European uh, Ethical and Alternative Banks. Uh, and basically, uh, their uh, uh, business model and their, their characteristics is very logical. Uh, they need to be democratically owned and governed by uh, its members. So only users of the bank, customers of the bank, uh, could be the owners of the bank. And uh, uh, even more, they need to be owners in the bank in order. To, uh, they need to be owners of the bank in order to become customers. Uh, they, because they are aware that they are managing funds of uh, uh, people, uh, they uh, uh, want to do it transparently. So they are showing to their owners where their money is going by uh, uh, even most of them publish uh, all their loans publicly. Uh, they need to take into consideration uh, long-term uh, uh, economic effects uh, uh, to make them sustainable. So it is not only uh, good to focus to the financial profitability of support the project, but equally they need to uh, look into the uh, environmental and social impact. And only when all three of the uh, of the elements are uh, positive, uh, the the financing can be approved. Uh, they are robust, uh, uh, which means that they uh, uh, try to minimize risk in their operations and the minimizing risk is done uh, by investing uh, and supporting uh, local projects. So projects uh, uh, that you know, where you know people, you can know uh, uh, what, what, uh, how, how, how they are doing, are they to be trusted or not, uh, and uh, uh, basically risk which we also take as some uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, word without thinking too much what uh, it is all uh, really about. Risk is a measure of unknown. So uh, if we want to reduce risk, we need to know much, much more things about uh, things that we are supporting. Uh, 
uh, and uh, that's why uh, ethical banks are basically not uh, participating in uh, any uh, market investments uh, at all uh, and are tied to the support of uh, projects in a local community, whatever in specific definition local might mean. And they, they need to be solidar and open, so not closed uh, clubs, and that is a little bit innovation uh, through the traditional cooperative banking, which is usually tied to uh, several uh, speci specifically focused targeted groups of uh, people in the society. Uh, ethical banks are open and they uh, uh, try to uh, get actually anybody, any actor in the society while it adheres to its, uh, its principle as a, as a member. Uh, how we did it? Uh, usually people don't think uh, about setting up a bank, so uh, when somebody comes with the idea and says let's uh, set up a bank, uh, then usually they uh, look uh, a little bit uh, surprised uh, and sometimes uh, even uh, first the reaction is that it is impossible because of this uh, uh, perception that banks are something which are reserved for uh, very rich people and uh, inaccessible to, to anybody who is not part of this, uh, uh, this elite club. But basically setting up a bank uh, is all about building up trust. So uh, banks are uh, institutions of ultimate trust. Uh, they uh, why because they actually manage your funds so you are putting your money into a bank because you believe that uh, it would be better managed there than you would uh, manage it yourself and the bank uh, uh, invests money by believing that the project in it is investing is going to uh, return to create new added value and be able to return it now, of course there are a lot of mechanisms uh, and the processes on top of that but the essence is trust so in order to create trust we spent uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds uh, uh, of hours and uh, actually thousands of hours going to meetings, having presentations, uh, appearing in the media, uh, uh, going for trips abroad to learn uh, and uh, get experiences from other banks. So, so basically four years later, uh, after doing that uh, from a team, we have a cooperative with uh, 1400 members. Uh, which is the largest one in Croatia. Croatia is a small country of 4 million, so every, with a very underdeveloped cooperative movement. So uh, that's uh, something which is uh, uh, quite an achievement in that, uh, in that period. And with these 1,400 members, uh, we persuaded them to pull up their knowledge, their resources together uh, to uh, get all the criteria fulfilled uh, to, have, uh, to have a bank. Uh, one of the important things that uh, came to us by an, by an accident, but uh, later on we discovered that it is actually a great, great thing that we have done it that way, is the legal structure. Uh, generally, we wanted to uh, set up a cooperative bank, so a cooperative that would, be, uh, uh, that, that would have a banking license. But in Croatia, uh, in difference to many other European countries, uh, it is not possible to have a cooperative bank. All banks by law need to be uh, joint stock companies. Uh, so um, uh, we we have uh, set up. Uh, we were thinking how to uh, do this uh, democratic governance on the one member one vote principle, which is very essential in order to prevent moral hazard in in the company, in 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 the, in, the, in the cooperative, and how to combine it with the joint stock company. And we found out that uh, it would uh, that the solution which we thought is originally just a workaround, where we will have. Uh, a, a company uh, which would have banking license 100% owned by a cooperative, it turned out to be a great governance solution because we just uh, discovered that with that we are clearly putting bank to the subordinate position to the cooperative, that it is just a financial service to the cooperative so that it doesn't have uh, its own free will uh, that could uh, lead it to a, a, a bad path of profit maximization or something like that. And that cooperative is then able to focus on non-financial support to its members, to providing them consulting services, uh, to connecting them with, with each other in very diverse multi-stakeholder cooperative as we have. Uh, it means that uh, we can basically find any kind of support from legal support, IT support, consulting support, marketing support within the cooperative. And with those two uh, fun uh, financial and non-financial uh, functions split, we actually saw that it is much, much more manageable, uh, manageable structure. Uh, what are uh, uh, other innovations that uh, this kind of model is bringing? Uh, we, we have actually um, uh, luxury that we are setting up from, uh, we are starting from scratch, so we don't have any legacy. 
and we can think about how to uh, include all trends that are happening today in the financial sector, where we see a huge untrust of people towards institutions and the desire to uh, uh, individually manage uh, uh, their, their finances, actually to decide how, how their money will be spending. We have a different uh, concepts of uh, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer lending, where, where people actually use uh, software platforms to organize themselves and do financing collectively. And most of banks see this as uh, uh, some kind of the unloyal competition and they are trying uh, to uh, to minimize it and to avoid it, not to support it uh, in any case. And, and uh, we see it as opportunity, actually. What we want, we want to uh, 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 integrate all those services to our own platform and as a cooperative bank to offer uh, people actually to uh, do this, what they want to do, so to participate in crowdfunding, to uh, uh, participate in peer-to-peer -peer lending with additional degree of trust that, uh, and security that we as a cooperative and a bank uh, with our processes could bring. Also, we are thinking about uh, uh, making transparent and uh, facilitating improvement of uh, all different relations, uh, economic relations within communities. And one, and one of the excellent tools that is uh, uh, able to support this uh, so-called uh, so complementary currency where we can actually motivate people to use their own internal currency, for example, our cooperative currency or currency for some municipality or region, in order to stimulate local economy. Because if we give some advantages by paying services and goods in that kind of currency, by, for example, automatically charging some preferential uh, discount uh, or something like that, uh, we can actually uh, uh, prefer and uh, stimulate uh, competitiveness of local economy uh, compared to, to others. So there are many experiments all around the world and in some of those ethical banks are already participating uh, where it has shown that uh, complementary currencies could facilitate a lot in the local economies. Uh, the, the third element of the innovation, uh, the, so except uh, the initial governance uh, and uh, uh, orientation towards uh, IT support and solutions, is also our model of growth. Uh, we have identified and have, we have seen many uh, examples where uh, banks that were ethical, that were cooperative, that were very much tied and rooted in the community, have stopped being so by uh, uh, growing too large and by uh, starting chasing uh, uh, measurements uh, uh, and indicators of success uh, that are uh, standard to uh, classical uh, mainstream banking sector. Uh, so that, that's something that we really don't want to, uh, to, to get to and we want to avoid. So we have put a limit on our size, which uh, uh, is for banking something between uh, 40 and 50,000 uh, members of, the, of a bank, and we want to replicate. So, so we want actually to uh, replicate very much in line with the cooperative model and cooperative way of thinking uh, by uh, uh, creating a network of sister banks uh, uh, in Croatia, but also worldwide. Uh, that would share their costs of managing uh, technology, managing their uh, uh, banking models, uh, risk management assessment models, etc. So sharing costs, but uh, keeping uh, local presence and uh, keeping uh, uh, all operational decisions on the on the level where it is manageable and where it could be uh, individually uh, uh, tailor made for each of the of, of the customers. So if you look at those technologies that are then used on the IT side, we uh, we are uh, we have our electronic wallet, which is enabling us to do transactions much more efficiently and cheaply. A crowdfunding platform, platform, as I said, the whole software is designed uh, to be bank as a service model. So it means that it doesn't have any, uh, uh, it doesn't require any local installations uh, and expensive server hardware, etc. It could be just uh, provided as a service uh, from the from the cloud. Uh, we have support for complementary currencies. Uh, we are using uh, blockchain technology to uh, ensure our transparency and uh, uh, to allow uh, all uh, our members and participants to verify uh, uh, everything, uh, all our processes uh, that, that we are uh, pursuing. And we uh, really uh, take a lot of effort in collecting data and uh, involving our members uh, in decision making where they have certain competencies uh, to actually be able to uh, get more uh, more decisions in uh, uh, attracting their knowledge uh, and uh, big data analysis that can be done uh, done on that. 
so all this technology, if you look at uh, uh, especially the, the technology where a blockchain also falls under, and that's called the distributed ledger technology, is very much in line with cooperative way of thinking. Uh, and I think now for the first time we have opportunity that uh, technology could actually favor decentralized models uh, and uh, uh, could lead to a much uh, bigger role of uh, cooperatives uh, in uh, uh, financial sector, but uh, uh, but in general also in the, in the in this society. So so if we just look to the conclusions, uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, the major factors in uh, of our success in Croatia are that we came with a very clear vision that is very uh, closely uh, that is very close uh, to uh, the feelings of people that are disillusioned with the classical financial system uh, that. Uh, uh, do not think that ethical banks are uh, possible and they are uh, accepting something uh, they are accepting working with them something as granted that they don't think about it and then when you try to when you come and you demystify the process and uh, uh, and, and offer a new vision that is uh, much more close to the needs and desires of people then uh, it, it can uh, uh, easily speak to them uh, uh, the total transparency of everything we're doing because we know that we are just uh, uh, entrusted to manage other people's money uh, where we keep close relationship with all uh, different stakeholders so uh, that we are able to uh, have a representation of uh, 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 big parts of the society in, in the governance. Uh, and uh, approach it systemically and with the support of uh, 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 best possible IT services and technology that we have for the information flow through the cooperative. Uh, uh, we think that we can uh, create the core of some alternative to the uh, mainstream uh, financial system that we that we know today and most of us are not, uh, not happy with. So uh, thank you for your attention and of course uh, it is very broad subject uh, and I would be more than happy to focus on the uh, questions and comments that you might have. Okay, this is a great time if you have questions or comments to be typing them in so that we can uh, organize some things. Or hand and we can... Yeah, either hand. Them. But, did, Sonia, did you have a question you were going to jump in with? I just wanted with? to say thank you, Gordon, for being brief because this is really a lot of information in, in really an amazingly short time given that we know we can talk for about two hours about all this. So this is great. And, uh, yeah, and let's uh, lead it further uh, with questions. Um, and if people don't have any, then we can... Yeah, well, one of the things, because again, we've had Goran here with us in Halifax, Canada, for those that aren't close by, uh, this week. So he's done a few other presentations and trying to think about what you might have heard and then how you translate that into your own realities and understanding how things are you know, different. I think something that maybe if you want to dig a little deeper into, okay, a number of people that might be involved in credit unions might be sitting there going, well, that's the same. We already do all of that. But I think there is a deeper level specifically around things like the transparency and the de democracy and those key principles. So could you give a, a specific operational example of how you, knowing what we tend to do in this part of the world, how what you do might actually be fundamentally a, a bit different because of the ethical framework? Yeah, uh, maybe one of the examples is uh, uh, that, that we are now very uh, hard working on uh, is, uh, for example, uh, trying to identify uh, stakeholders with uh, different uh, interests uh, and the different uh, financing needs and uh, 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 and requirements, and then see how they can be tied together within the cooperative and how uh, this process then could uh, enlarge uh, cooperative capacity. So one of the examples is uh, energy. Uh, we, when we, when you look to our uh, focuses of the cooperative, so our uh, investment focuses priorities, one of among them is also a support uh, uh, for renewable energy. And uh, uh, we, at, at some point, we identified that we have. Uh, within the cooperative, among uh, 1,400 members, where we have something like 400 companies, 450 companies, several municipalities, and other individuals, that among them we have about 1.5 terawatt hour of consumption, annual uh, energy consumption. And then on the other side, uh, among other members of the cooperative, we have uh, several energy production projects, so uh, free wind farms and uh, uh, solar energy, etc., with a total of some. 
uh, 700 megawatts of the installed uh, or to be installed capacity. So we said, oh, uh, uh, we are actually, we want to build the same uh, economic uh, system. Why we wouldn't try to bridge uh, those two groups uh, by setting up a, a cooperative owned energy supplier company that would be then uh, transferring, uh, being able to transfer energy from those uh, energy producers in the renewable energy to, uh, the, uh, to, to consumers in our cooperative, which would be also then non for profit because we want, of course, uh, uh, to minimize the, uh, uh, the, the cost uh, for consumers, so to offer them as cheap electricity as possible. And the other side, everything that uh, is paid without uh, unnecessary intermediaries to transfer to our producers to, to increase their uh, profitability. Uh, so, uh, and, and actually to redirect the whole cash flows of this process, which is huge. If you look, uh, what does it mean? Uh, 1.5 terawatt hours of energy annually. That uh, is a huge amount in, uh, in 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 money in dollars. Uh, uh, so uh, we, we just identifying that we uh, and uh, listening to our members who are who were the ones that identified that and building uh, infrastructure for it we, we we are very close to uh, create a huge uh, benefit a huge added value for all of them and that's something which uh, requires a type of uh, uh, listening to members and the democratic governance and uh, 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 creativity and innovation which is unfortunately uh, not present in many of the traditional uh, uh, traditional institutions uh, uh, neither in Europe and uh, uh, I hear in the last week that a similar thing is in Canada and and that's a huge opportunity that could then uh, that that kind of thinking bring to, uh, to to credit unions to cooperative banks but also to the society as a whole right there's a question that Goran can see on the screen from Elizabeth Hicks around the currencies you might want to expand a bit on currencies and yeah, then yeah. The, the blockchain Bitcoin pits because of course you sort of went over some of that quite quickly yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I see the question. So, so uh, yeah, the currency. Uh, so, uh, would the currency used uh, be similar to other current blockchain currencies, for example, Bitcoin or a specific currency for the specific bank? Uh, it, the technology would be similar in a way that we want and we strongly believe in uh, a blockchain or uh, more specifically said to this uh, distributed ledger technologies as a future that would allow people to uh, uh, invent and create tools. To, to manage their assets uh, uh, more efficiently and more transparently, but uh, not uh, in a way uh, as a, a Bitcoin that we want to create, I don't know, some universal global alternative currency. Uh, we, we really want to uh, create uh, uh, currencies that are specific and tailor-made for certain purpose or for a certain com community. For example, uh, in the energy uh, example that I was uh, mentioning before, we are thinking about uh, uh, introducing uh, solar coin, uh, maybe the currency that would be tied to one kilowatt hour of the energy uh, that would be used only to make this transaction uh, very visible and transparent so that the people who are, are investing in the concept of our energy supplier know that uh, uh, actually uh, their investment is tied to uh, the real production that is created by, by those, uh, the, those uh, I don't know, solar uh, panels with solar coin or wind, uh, uh, wind coins for, for wind farms. Uh, or uh, another example would be to have a currency uh, that is uh, uh, created and supported by our bank uh, uh, on, on some of the islands uh, in Croatia. We, we, the, there is a huge uh, that there are many islands in Croatia. Many of them uh, have problem that uh, their local economy is very active during the summer months, the tourist season, and uh, that it, it is in virtually nothing happening during the winter months. Uh, and by having their own currency, uh, which would make more attractive for people to uh, uh, buy uh, products and services locally for all, everything that could be done and bought locally. Uh, instead of uh, getting it uh, from uh, uh, from the mainland, uh, it, it could boost activities and uh, uh, create uh, uh, a lot of new efforts and opportunities that are not tied to the touristic season on the islands. Uh, 
So those, those are two examples, but the third one is obviously also the, our uh, cooperative uh, uh, coin, uh, so that would be tied to our cooperative and it could be then replicated in any other cooperative uh, to uh, make this uh, incentive to buy cooperative products and services uh, within the cooperative, uh, that, that is also something that made, makes sense. So the, the, uh, we, we, what we now have is technology that is enabling creation of those currencies, but uh, uh, we want to create them only when we identify uh, uh very clear uh, uh purpose of it uh, and uh, we think that it would serve uh, uh, some particular economic goal that is then defined by uh, cooperative or some group within the cooperative okay so i'm kind of talking we have oh. more questions uh okay so we'll go there and then i'll have a question later. okay the next question is this the yeah. Uh, uh, Sorry, the question screen's just getting a bit full, so just hold on one second. Sonia, do you want to chime in with your question, and then I'll organize this. Don't worry about that yet. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, Goran, uh, do you have uh, any uh, capacity for cooperative development? Because you're saying that you're recognizing among your members uh, the opportunities to create cooperative for uh, energy exchange in this case, and so on, right? So, do you have any? Do you to support your members? Or are you able to support them in in uh, cooperative development? Uh, uh, yes, we are young cooperative, so it is still uh, quite limited uh, uh, in a way that we don't have so much resources uh, to support it financially, and that's one of the purposes and reasons why we want to have a bank in order to. Uh, expand our possibilities uh, to finance that and support it on a much uh, higher scale that we have now. Uh, but we have done a lot uh, uh, of the support in this peer-to-peer uh, -peer support, where we are actually uh, facilitating and uh, uh, providing trust to members that are able to help each other uh, on some of the uh, aspects of their businesses. And uh, we have this very open structure in which uh, any group of members that uh, find some common interest can create uh, so-called section within the cooperative in which they can uh, group themselves uh, we can provide them all uh, the infrastructure that they need uh, uh, to facilitate this process and uh, within that section they can uh, develop almost autonomous, uh, autonomously uh, their products and services uh, uh, while they are in line with the, uh, with, with the general interest of the cooperative. Okay. This work gets interesting because we're trying to read between the lines a little bit in comments and questions. So let's start with the question around how this example in your ethical bank is different from credit unions we have in yeah. Canada, and I'd argue in the U.S. and other places as well. Uh, perhaps this is getting at you know the spread of product and services, like what you actually offer and do. Since the question also included whether something like credit cards are offered, yeah. off, offered, and whether you, you know hopefully you have enough understanding yeah. of our version yeah. of things here to yeah. comment on that. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the the difference is that we uh, decided to start uh, as a bank and not as a credit union uh, because we wanted to uh, have more tools on our disposal to uh, uh, to get all these finances powerful, so to to uh, directly uh, participate in. Uh, uh, in, in the transaction business, even international transaction business, to be able to offer uh, uh, support for electronic uh, money, to be able to uh, make agreements without intermediaries uh, with uh, different card providers. So yeah, we are offering cards, but not classical credit cards, because uh, in our policy we do not support uh, classical non-purpose consumer loans. So our, our policy is uh, almost 70% uh, uh, to 80% uh, funds uh, uh, focused to the support of businesses, of uh, especially small and medium businesses and farmers and the real economy. And uh, by to individuals, we are financing only something which could be should be could be considered as a basic human needs like uh, uh, housing, but uh, the first uh, uh, first home, uh, some I don't know uh, education purposes, medical purposes, and those kind of things. But we are not giving uh, non. Uh, uh, non-purpose uh, uh, loans uh, and the car, uh, credit card is one form of such a loan. So, so we are avoiding it. We have debt cards. So we are, in order to be able to access to our money, we have debt cards and we have prepaid uh, uh, cards. Uh, uh, the, the main difference is actually that, that we want to have a, a scale and capacity to uh, work uh, as a real bank. Uh, that means also to be regulated as a bank, uh, which was, uh, I see there, another question. 
but uh, to share costs uh, uh, with other similar minded uh, financial organizations and, and banks because we think that only by uh, having all the tools on our disposal that uh, uh, that uh, full fledged banks have uh, we can actually uh, be competitive in the creation of our uh, vision for the economy uh, that that we want uh, so so to to be just uh, keep uh, kept as a uh, as, as a small institutions we uh, won't be able to create this uh, this change so any other comments on just that question around how you are regulated i'm sure that question comes a bit from here in canada you know being regulated as a credit union versus being regulated as a bank but trying to imagine that in a croatian or a european union context might you might be saying something that may be interpreted differently here is there any yeah. additional comment you'd make on that to help betty with her question uh, maybe uh, from from the conversations that we had uh, here in last week, uh, actually there are many similarities in, in the regulation. Uh, uh, being a bank means uh, being more regulated and uh, increasing uh, regulation costs, uh, but that would also mean uh, uh, possibilities to participate uh, uh, on uh, money markets uh, for the uh, access to to funds. So as I said, we are not participating on the markets. Uh, 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 by by investing our money into it, but if you look at our sources of funding, uh, of course our primary source uh, is the capital of our members. But in order to scale up, we we will uh, we are also open and we uh, are going to use uh, different other sources that are uh, that are available to us because uh, we are going to be a bank, uh, uh, and that's primarily uh, tied and that's European thing to the uh, European Development Banks, which are offering very uh, cheap financing for many infrastructural and development projects uh, and uh, to uh, collaborate uh, much more uh, with uh, uh, different uh, ethical participants uh, on, the, uh, on the on the financial market so the federation of ethical banks have their own uh, common uh, uh, investment instruments uh, there are ethical uh, investment funds uh, that are targeting uh, uh, impact and social change and, and uh, not uh, not the return uh, uh, not, not the uh, prof prof profit returns so in order to utilize all those resources uh, most efficiently we need to be a bank so this next question is a little bit challenging to perhaps articulate because i think it has a lot of uh, context behind it <laughs> so it's from Chon. And so I'll read what it says and might add a comment before handing it over to Goran. So it sounds easy to create a co-op bank, right, Goran? Uh, once members, the people have the will and the needs, as Goran's mentioned. But when it comes to building one, the participation of the local organizations or stakeholders are not participating or they're simply using the co-op banking services. So not enough portfolios or capital to actually operate the bank. Uh, according to Gorin, who else could help create a co-op bank for a population of 1,400 people? Should government come in and help out? So I think it might be helpful for you to just talk a little bit more, because you had a slide that you didn't say a lot about, but the amount of effort <laughs> that went into what you started. But I also think from some of the conversations we've had this week, uh, the, sometimes it can be hard to fix the infrastructure that we already have, and starting from scratch to build what you want uh, is partly a message I've gotten out of your story, but I'll leave that response to you. Yeah, uh, but, but by purpose, I, I left it uh, easy, more easier <laughs> than it is uh, this explanation how to set up a co-op and a bank. Uh, basically, it's really hard, painstaking process uh, that requires 24-7 hours uh, effort uh, from uh, many people to build that trust. But the uh, uh, essence, actually, the logic of it is very, very uh, clear and very straightforward. So. Uh, you, you need just to persuade people that the thing that you are doing are really things that you believe in it, that they are uh, uh, not some kind of uh, lie, there is no catching in it, and that uh, uh, they uh, can uh, internalize this vision as their own. So, so that, that's basically what it is all about. Uh, but all these different uh, then the processes and uh, extremely complex process of setting up a bank, uh, that's something that just requires time, time and effort because uh, it's all regulated you uh, 
you have all laws that are describing how how it should be done, and you just need to have right people and uh, enough energy and uh, and uh, resources to to set it up. Uh, but but the other question, who should uh, help uh, to create that kind of a bank? Uh, that's uh, that's actually a very good question. And uh, you ask if it would be a government, and of course I would say yes, because the role of the government should be to support uh, community and people and any kind of the community and people's projects. Uh, so some ideal government would definitely be a good uh, uh, a good actor to do that uh, but uh, of course we cannot always count on that uh, in in europe we are lucky that there are many uh, public uh, uh, on on the national and uh, uh, and the european union level uh, institutions that are doing that kind of work so uh, uh, the the european investment fund the european uh, fund, uh, european bank for reconstruction and development those are institutions that are public institutions that are owned by union capitalized by commercial banks uh, but who are uh, giving funds to support uh, that kind of uh, things uh, but but the answer is uh, maybe uh, the uh, the other part of answers if it is not available then it is uh, taking on the uh, real co-op uh, uh, approach. Uh, uh, let's see and find partners. Maybe in some region, uh, these 14,000 members uh, is not enough, even though in our calculation with our operational cost, this is, this is about the sustainability uh, level. Uh, with some uh, 12 to 14,000 people, let's say 15,000 people, uh, we should be sustainable in our business model uh, uh, regarding the operational and, and uh, regulation costs. So it is some, uh, somewhere near that. Uh, but um, but then, uh, yeah, uh, looking uh, more to find a partner, maybe to find a similar co-op in a neighboring region and uh, set up their joint uh, uh, bank. Uh, that, that, that's, I think, uh, the cooperative way, uh, looking who else could be uh, sharing the same uh, needs uh, is always uh, the best approach I can uh, I can suggest right now. Uh, is the bank owned 100%? Uh, maybe to answer that quickly. Yeah, uh, our, our precondition was actually to translate cooperative, cooperative one member, one vo vote uh, management structure to the bank, one to one. So, in order to achieve that, uh, we are 100% owned and we are not going to sell uh, or, or allow anybody else to come into a shareholder structure of a bank. So, would be and will remain 100% owned by the co op. Would the financing the bank would access publicly? No, she's asking the second part of the question. Oh, uh, the, 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 if, uh, would the financing the bank would access publicly? Oh yeah, uh, it, it would be a combination. So, so basically, what we want, we want to prefer, uh, we want to uh, uh, do as much as possible a risk sharing, and uh, uh, we are very much supporting uh, quasi equity instruments. Uh, actually, we would like to motivate cooperative members through that uh, before mentioned aforementioned crowdfunding platform to participate uh, through equity crowdfunding in projects of other members. So basically our process is that uh, we as a bank, we are aggregator of projects. We are getting all different uh, ideas uh, and projects to be financed. We do what is job of a bank to uh, look at, uh, analyze uh, those projects, do a risk assessment, uh, a check on the credibility of the applicant and all those uh, stuff that banks need to do. And at the point when we are happy with the project and we are ready to give a debt instrument to, to credit it, uh, before we do that, we uh, put it on the crowdfunding platform and invite our members to participate in financing of the project. And if 100% uh, of funds is uh, uh, found that way, then we don't provide any credit. It is just uh, then crowdfunding project. But if, I don't know, for example, 50% uh, or 20% is collected that way, then we top it up with the rest as a bank in, in a debt form. So uh, uh, the reason why we are doing it, because then uh, for the uh, part that is crowdfunding, we are sharing risk with our own customers. Uh, so uh, uh, it is not a risk on the bank itself, which is very good for a bank uh, uh, capital adequacy rate. Uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, we are offering um, investment opportunities, uh, really uh, real non-speculative investment opportunities to our members. And we prefer them to, uh, if they want to earn some funds, 
not to keep it as a saving, as a classical saving, but, but to use it as this uh, uh, investment instrument to, to the projects that are uh, of a very low risk. Because, uh, as I said previously, we are supporting only projects of members. We know them well. And statistics of existing ethical banks, which do not have such a, a sophisticated uh, uh, IT and uh, data collection and monitoring policies, is that uh, uh, only about 2% of investments is not returned. So uh, non-performance rate of the loans uh, statistically by existing ethical banks is uh, not more than 2%, which actually makes those investments much more secure than it would be uh, just a normal equity investment uh, somewhere else. Um, yeah, I have one more question uh, because you you talked about your cooperative uh, that is really a multi-stakeholder co-op. So some of your members are individuals, others are companies. You have cooperatives, you have associations, labor right? unions, uh, municipalities, really all different sectors. Right. And so, how do you then um, how is your governance structured so that you don't have dominance of those larger yeah. members over the smaller ones? Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, uh, regardless of uh, the very different size of uh, of members, we uh, uh, look at them from this perspective as uh, potential uh, customers and clients. So uh, the uh, financial needs of uh, one uh, municipality are obviously much larger than the financial needs uh, of the uh, of the individual member. But uh, we cannot allow that uh, because of the size, uh, the procedures, uh, and uh, 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 and then the uh, goals of a bank are uh, actually compromised in a way that they favor just the financially larger members. So that's why I insist uh, on this uh, one member, one vote principle, regardless of the type and size of the member. But what we do, uh, we uh, also have a rule that the maximum uh, financing amount that could be done by a bank is eight times higher uh, the investment into a cooperative. So everybody who wants to get, I don't know, 800,000 uh, something uh, of, of kunas, our local currency, need at first to put 100,000 uh, as a, a capital contribution to the cooperative. Cooperative is accumulating uh, uh, those kind of contributions uh, of new members, but also of existing members that are uh, uh, willing to get the new financing. Uh, and uh, this is continuous recapitalization flow then for a bank. So uh, from the governance perspective, it is one member, one vote. Uh, uh, it is preventing moral hazard and it is preventing that the rules are made into a favor of, uh, of the financially stronger participants, uh, members. Uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, those with larger financial needs, they will have a, a, a possibility to get higher loans and uh, actually more work of the bank and the cooperative would be done to uh, support their needs than, than for those smaller. So we see it as some kind of the fair trade-off. And uh, even though it is not a, a usual way of doing it, after we explain it that way, our members uh, just accept it and they are happy with it. And uh, uh, if they are not happy with it, then probably they do not share the same value as we are, so it's also fine. They, are, they will go somewhere else. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. It's just a couple minutes before the hour. And thanks, Goran, for physically being here with us in Halifax, but delivering this webinar. Just to say that uh, from the cooperative management education side, if you have any questions or things you want to get involved with us, on, whether it's courses or otherwise. Many of the people on the call are, are close to us, graduate students and instructors, but I noticed some other names. We have some upcoming programs in Nelson, British Columbia, and the masters and diplomas in full swing to bring a cohort together in the summer. But uh, any ideas are, are welcome on that ongoing work on our end. So do get directly in touch with myself, Karen, here, or Sonia, or Aaron, who's also on the call. And that's it for today. We have recorded this, so assuming that recording uh, uploads the way it's supposed to after we finish, that's available if there's anyone you would like to share this with later. So again, thanks to Goran. Thanks to everyone for participating in all of your questions. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.